I recognise um, the honourable guest Yvonne Ridley to continue the case for the proposition. Madam President, um, I must commend my colleague Sayran uh, for her wonderful speech. Um, English is not her first language, nor is it mine. I'm a Geordie. Um, <laughs> but uh, addressing the, the issue that this House believes we cannot thrive without religion. Of course, I've been invited here today because of my defence of Islam. But if converting from Christianity to this great faith has taught me anything, it is to understand and embrace people of all religions, because we share a common belief in respect, spirituality, and peace. In my interfaith work, I've come across a few pagans, some Wiccans, and they clearly respect and value nature, and believe in unseen forces. I've even had the local white witch in my village um, and her wizard partner who lectures at Newcastle University drop in for a, a cup of green tea. I've not yet knowingly met any Jedi Knight Church followers, but it is an official religious faith with thousands of adherents from around the world, and they do believe in the one all-powerful force that binds all things in the universe together. Personally, I don't believe people don't believe. For instance, how many atheists went down with the Titanic? Um, many a soldier has, has found God in a foxhole. And even Jean-Paul Sartre, for instance, was famous for his uh, development and defense of atheistic existential philosophy. And yet a Catholic priest was called to his deathbed uh, despite his views. Renounce the devil, urged the priest, to which Sartre said, this is no time to be making enemies. Um, Baudelaire, the 19th century French poet, literary uh, and art critic wrote, never forget, when you hear people boast of our progress of enlightenment, that the loveliest trick of the devil is to persuade you that he does not exist. Initially, organized religion was woven into the fabric of our lives and existence, and it was impossible to thrive or develop without sharing common beliefs in the one God for the monolithic faiths and a great presence or influence of force in others. Sadly, bad things have been done in the name of religion and are still carried out today by those who try and use religion as some sort of medieval carrot and stick. But given the neoliberal age we live in, one which the great feminist philosopher Rosie Bredotti called hyper-individualistic consultation of the advanced capitalist age, it is hardly surprising there is a move to try and destroy organized religion. From a personal point of view, I'd say to any religious haters in here tonight, do your worst. God is in my heart and will remain there regardless of what the future holds. I would say, perhaps rather provocatively, maybe we don't need an organized religion, but we do need to keep faith with our God or gods. When you look at the destruction caused in the Catholic Church by the industrial scale cover-ups of paedophile priests, when you look at the wholesale destruction, murder and carnage of Daesh, um, it's easy to see how some people will be repulsed by the notion of organized religion. But the truth is, those wretched priests who carried out their crimes 
not, did it not because of their Christian beliefs, nor did the head choppers from ISIS or Daesh conduct their killing sprees because of Islam. They did it for control, and in the ISIS case, control of territory. How many lands did the British Empire civilize in the name of God? And yet we know it was all about control, wealth, power, and territory. What we are asking here tonight is can we exist uh, without religion? And I say while many terrible things have been done in the name of religion, we need a meaning and purpose in life to forge ahead. Without finding at all stages of our lives, including dying, um, presents a huge challenge without faith. We all need a meaningful existence right up to the point we leave, an existence which runs within the confines of God's laws for most of us. Without our religious belief, we have no definition. My mum is 91. My father died 10 years ago, and while she experienced feelings of hopelessness in those early days as a widow, she must have wondered, was life worth living without her soulmate? but her identity as a Christian became stronger and gave her that spiritual and emotional support she needed to carry on. Some of you may find this difficult to understand, being millennials or generation me. I've no doubt there are a few who will say, I don't believe in God, but I'm spiritual. Um, I'm a spiritual individual. What they really mean is, like Sartre, you're having a just-in-case moment. So we're unable to write off God entirely, while keen to express compassion, empathy, and kindness. Values that believers are taught in their synagogues, in their churches, temples, and mosques. In this world of uncertainty, people like the millennials want more guarantees, and that is why hundreds and thousands are seeking a religion that gives them guidelines and frames from within to work. As I said before, a practicing Christian, um, I used to be, I wasn't a great example of a practicing Christian either. I probably went to church maybe twice a month, which let's face it in Britain is bordering on fanaticism um, <laughs> in the eyes of some. And then I began to study Islam. Yes, I was captured by the Taliban after the horrific events of 9-11. And yes, the experience did trigger an interest in Islam. But I set out on an educational journey, not a spiritual one. I already had my belief. I already had my God. I wasn't looking for anything else. But since 9-11, Islam has become the fastest growing religion in the world today. Hundreds of thousands like me have become Muslims and are determined to head into the 21st century, promoting peace, love, and tolerance. Like the majority of Jews and Christians in the world today, you have nothing to fear from any of us. But without our faiths and beliefs, I believe the world would plunge into chaos and disorder. In George Orwell's book, 1984, the Big Brother totalitarian state aimed for complete and absolute power over everything and everyone. To submit to that meant to give up all other beliefs, and that included religion. It meant giving up on God, which brings us back to the sort of world Satan strives for, a Big Brother state where there is no God, no beliefs, people just living in a regime where torture, abuse, cruelty will go th um, be carried out by the state and will go ahead unchecked. Believers want the opposite of this dystopian nightmare because no matter how organized religion is, it operates on goodwill and free will. Wherever in the world we are born, we are born with the desire to be free. Religion is not about destroying our freedoms, but reinforcing those beliefs. Thank you.